Hello folks, it's Kerry with 401k Dexters. Kingston. There's Kingston in the back seat. It's my daughter and son-in-law's German Shepherd. We've also got uh, Lincoln down there, the Australian Shepherd. And Jace is next to him. The little mutt that my daughter rescued. I am doing the good uh, father and father-in-law good deed and taking the dogs to the kennel for the kids. They're getting ready to go up to uh, Colorado to visit family. So uh, Trey's out working. I think he's got one more test to do for the semester and he's also got a job interview this afternoon. So his afternoon is booked. And my daughter called and asked if I would do a favor and run the dogs over to the kennel for him. So I told him yes. Things we don't do for our children, huh? Um, King here reminded me that uh, I told the kids when they decided to get him as a puppy that they were going to make a mistake. But he's actually turned out to be a really good dog. He's uh, one of the ones that's most trustworthy and most protective of our grandson. Uh, he's a good boy. He's got some issues, but don't we all, huh, King? But it got me to thinking about uh, two mistakes or regrets that I have about pre-retirement that I thought I'd share with you guys. One of them is not contributing to a Roth IRA earlier prior to retirement. About 24, 26 months prior to retirement, I did start uh, changing over my 401k contributions to the IRA portion of the account because uh, when L3 Communications merged with Harris, they opened up the opportunity for um, Roth account contributions. So I wish I would have started Roth earlier than the 24 months prior to retirement just because it would have given me a little bit of a cushion in the nest egg of post-tax dollars. But hindsight's 2020 that way, so that's one thing that I wish I would have done. The other is becoming fully aware of health savings accounts, HSAs, and how that money might be used after an early retirement. Since I retired at 56 and a half and am not eligible for Medicare until 65, that leaves us a few years in between to find our own private health insurance. Now, luckily, um, the healthcare.gov or Obamacare does have a very nice program. You go in and you either base it on your current year's earnings or in the case where we just signed up next year's earnings you punch in all your family information you your spouse and or kids if you have any still at home and their uh, health history and the state and zip code that you're looking for insurance in and it will throw out different options I was surprised that uh, there were numerous different plans, both gold, silver, and uh, then some, I don't know if they were platinum or if they were bronze, I guess. It's gold, silver, and bronze plans to choose from. Of course, the bronze plans are cheaper per month, but they also run with a higher deductible. So we shopped around and found a plan that was comparable to the expenses that we were paying at my employer and surprisingly chose a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan that uh, it does have a higher deductible, but it's a lot cheaper than uh, the plan that was offered um, post-retirement from my employer. So I didn't realize at the time that HSAs were introduced to our health plan program that had I put money away in an HSA 
that those monies could then be used after I retired to pay my health insurance premiums through Obamacare. So, after giving these guys a ride to the uh, kennel, I thought that uh, I would put this video together as a tip for those that are on the pre-retirement side to consider, one, contributing earlier to a Roth to give you availability of post-tax dollars in your account, and also uh, investigate and learn more about HSAs and how they might benefit you to bridge the gap between when you retire and your availability and eligibility for Medicare. All right, you guys have a good one. 401k Dexters, out.